where you have a dancer up, up above and the other down below. And that, that, uh, that's it. Yeah, that's uh, from Joseph Hoffman. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did that whole sequence, just have that up down. <laughs> it's, um, that, that's a fairly obscure choice. <laughs> well, yeah. the Michael Powell one. Yeah. I know it is, but it's, like, it's not what it is. Yeah, better known no. films, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, um, before we get to, before I get you to talk about these films. Uh, it reminds me of, you know, a bit before, um, was a, in the 80s, uh, in addition to the dance films that you were making, um, you made films that you uh, call your dark films. And it, it makes me want to ask the question, also because we already died in the 80s. Um, that was the period when, um, I, I, I was in the late 80s, early 90s, I was, involved with ACT UP and a lot of the filmmaking that I was involved with at the time that I was writing about and thinking about were AIDS activist films. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would be interesting to hear what you say about um, the effect of the epidemic on your filmmaking during that period. Well, I, um, as, a, as a filmmaker and as an artist, I'm, I'm not a conceptual artist. Um, and so I really... I start with a feeling or I start not knowing what I'm doing and then I make something and then maybe by the end I know what it's about. And uh, so I think that that's the way that, I mean, this whole environment that uh, was surrounding me and um, just provoked me to make a certain kind of film that, you know, has, has a very deep subtext is the AIDS crisis, but maybe not obvious. I mean, it's not like the AIDS activist films. Right, right. But it's, I mean, you call them Sick. Yeah, you know, and they, they are sick. Yeah. I mean, son of Sam, Delilah, um, about a serial murderer. Mm -hmm. um, but Sam was shot, shot in the kitchen. Right. No, yeah. 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 It was, was it a, a kitchen commission? No, I mean, the, the, I did a, a live piece in collaboration with a three act piece that I was supposed to, that I thought was going to maybe be a, a television. Spectacular, but um, <laughs> didn't get funded for because it, it was a way too sick. Um, but uh, so I, I, for my part of that, I shot film and showed it live uh, very soon after, you know, rough cut. And then I turned that into some sample. And there's actually a kind of spin off from that film, which reminds me a bit of, of these film installation pieces, mm -hmm. um, the one called Aria with mm -hmm. John Kelly. Um, which, so, so in a way, generically, again, these films are like, I mean, to say that they're portraits is too simple, but um, they are portraits at the same time, it seems to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I mostly work with people that I know, that I have known quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a few that I just put together by a producer or something, but mostly they're people that grow out of my life. And, and I've known them for five years before I ever put them in front of the camera. So I, you know, uh, and, and the people that I love and, and respect and want to show what they do and share it with other people. So. Right. It's interesting, the, um, I mean, the, the, the first one um, with Anne um, is, is, is silent. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful film, I love that film. Um, but then you have, um, the Lee Bowery film, where it, curiously Lee Bowery is lip syncing, but his lips are sealed. Yeah. Well, I mean that that had been an idea of mine for several years before I did it, and and it was a look that Lee <clears throat> had stopped using. I mean, he used to do a look in for a few months and then a new one, new one. And uh, I said, I have an idea. Bring your lips to New York next time you come, <laughs> because I want to do something. And so. Uh -huh. So we just did it in that one evening. I wrote, he, I picked a song, wrote the words really big on cards. <laughs> That's how we did it. Yeah. It's it's marvelous. And then and then of course the lady bunny, in her tirade, it mm -hmm. goes. It's it's a long, wonderful tirade and um, a, a right on tirade. Mm -hmm. uh, the show is called The Waning of Justice. And, um, 
And but you know she goes in and out. So mm -hmm. like every now and then you're you're seeing this lip syncing drag queen mm -hmm. who um, uh, who's uh, gone into silence. Mm -hmm. so go, yeah. um, and of course her voice is a higher pitch than the thing that she had a, the song that she actually mm -hmm. sings. Um, uh, I don't know if you want to mention other. Of, I mean Anthony is one of the people that you've worked with a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you've done a couple. Of Marina Abramovich, mm -hmm. um, if you want to talk about the, I just the range of people that you've well, I mean, it's just people that have come into my life. Marina and I would work together uh, by a producer uh, initially, and then we got to be very good friends. And I worked with her on some on two evening length live pieces, um, uh, and then just recently I did a, a thing for Art Twenty One with her. Mm -hmm. we, I've known her for also for a long time. I mean, it's just, um, you know, I f feel very lucky that I've worked with all these people that I like. And well, they're very lucky to work yeah. with you, too, I would say. Well, maybe we should open it to the house and see if there are any questions um, for Charlie. Um, can we like, have the lights nice up in the house a little bit so I can see who works? Uh, Charlie, could you talk a little bit about live improvisational technique when you work? About the live improvisational work? The live improv, yes. Uh, well, I mean, I started that with um, uh, when I did uh, a show called Instant Fame at the a participant in New York in 2003. I think. That was sort of the beginning of my live work, too. And, and I, then I did, redid that project in London uh, a couple years later. And it was, uh, I invited anyone to come into the uh, gallery and I would uh, make a live portrait of them uh, with processing and um, so, so either people made appointments or they just came in and if I was free then I would do it. Um, I asked them to bring, you know, mostly I asked for show-offs or people who had something to bring, but I didn't always get that. Um, and uh, so I just, it was a very, I didn't realize how intense it was going to be, but, you know, doing one person after another was quite, uh, and sometimes they were, you know, I got into it, sometimes I felt I wasn't doing such a great job, but whatever it was, it was live, and it was shot with two cameras in a, in a studio space on the ground floor of uh, participant and then upstairs was uh, was the result you was, you could see me what I, how I was mixing it um, uh, and then that sort of expanded into doing these um, two big uh, live museum sized installations uh, with uh, Mika Chijima and new humans one in San Francisco and one in London and then uh, and then continuing to do that uh, at the tape, you know, with, the, with another kind of performance uh, element. And then I've also done these live improvisations that was just a musician, collaborations, which I really enjoy doing. I haven't done them so much lately, but um, which, where it's just um, me with a set of clips off a laptop and a musician. Uh, and often I've worked with Christian Benez from Europe, from from Vienna, and also uh, William Wazinski from here, from America. And it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, so I've loved your work for a long time. Just last week, I rewatched The Red Shoes, and I was what? struck. I, just last the week, I rewatched The Red Shoes, and I was struck um, by the similarity between sort of the collaboration between Powell Pressburger and Hein Heckroth, 
and the style that I see in your work, which is this sort of formal extravagance. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about Powell and... Well, I mean, the, 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 actually, the only part, I mean, I never stole anything out of the red shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the Powell that I did look at, because it was a, a, more of a dance film, um, pure, you know, purely a dance film, was uh, uh, Tales of Hoffman. So I, I always, you know, look for, I mean, at that period anyway, I was always looking for interesting reasons and things with movement. Um, so that's, that, that's how I can, and I also like Michael Powell's work anyway, but, uh, but Red Shoes, I, did, I, I resisted, I think, I think. It was well, the lurid color, color, maybe. The lurid color, I, well, I've always liked the lurid color. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, could you talk us, uh, uh, please, a little bit about your relationship with the sound? Because you mentioned that at the beginning, for example, with Mars Cunningham, all the videos that you record was in silence, and you also use the silence at the show, at the one just this. And I'm curious also because I saw the show at the gallery that I think is fantastic, and the whole experience of being in one room and listening the soundtrack that there is in the other room with the sunsets. And I'm curious also about the back the bagpipes sound that there is somewhere there and you try something. It's um yeah, she's asking what I think about the um, relationship between silence and sound. Is that is that am I in which in well, well she's talking uh, first of all about the, the show actually. Oh the show, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think in, in, in the Cunningham films, we talk about uh, working in silence and overlaying the sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's interesting also to think about, for me, how you, um, you, you went from working in silence and putting the sound down, because that's possible with Cunningham, and then actually working with musical sequences, which... Well, the, the first... Um, well, um, so the Cunningham work really was all, all in silence, all shooting all of the pieces. There's one piece that we shot um, that we had to have music for because there was a cue on, in the music, but everything else was shot in silence. All, of, all the kind of things I've done. Um, so it really is, that was made me very sensitive to movement. And I, the other thing about my um, dance films is I'm re I really pay attention. I mean, I love the choreography. I pay attention to it. It's not just movement for me. So I try to respond, you know, be respectful and respond and enhance if I can. Um, uh, and then in terms of in the, in the installations, um, I've <clears throat> since I've been in the art world and doing installations, um, <clears throat> There's sound pollution. You, you, if you're in a group show, then you're either the victim of sound pollution or the causer of sound pollution. <laughs> and, uh, you know, making your, your sound spills over to someone else's space or someone else's space sound spills over to your space. So I'm very conscious of that in that context. So when I have, uh, in, when I did the show before, the, the Illusion of Democracy in, in Bushwick, uh, I had two pieces that were silent, and I was doing a third, which I really wanted to have sound, but I really realized that it would color the entire other uh, other pieces, so I left it silence, in silence, all in silence. And this one, um, I wasn't, I mean, I knew I wanted to have sound in this, but I also liked like you to experience silence in this particular piece. I think it, it was important, I don't know exactly why, but I just felt there should be some silences. And so I coordinated the silence in the back room with the silences in the front room, so it was really silent. Um, and I, I think sound really 
you know, I mean, especially in the immersive kind of installations that I do, is how I use sound is quite important. I, I thought I noticed a technique you were using when you were following dancers with your camera. At certain moments with their bodies, they would, they would make a motion and you would follow it. And it, it seemed almost like mirroring the motion that they were doing. It was very quick, but I noticed it in two or three of the different films. And so I was curious specifically about how, well, first of all, I'm, I'm assuming that you are actually operating the camera and you're behind the camera. Uh, uh, in, that, in the ones you saw, I was, but I often, now, nowadays I don't. But in, the, in the first film, there were certain actions where you were following them and it seemed like the camera had a physical relationship. Well, it didn't, I mean, it had, I was, you know, we had a pattern, I mean, it was a very complicated shot to, to figure out. Um, we had a pattern and then Merce would put the dancers in and then I would move and then we would see that it would be good if I, there was someone in the way when I moved so I could follow them so there wasn't just nothing there. Um, so it was, it was very give, give and take in that shot, um, and um, as far as following, you know, following the movement, of course I would follow the movement if I, or go against it, one, one or the other, but, uh, you know, it relates to the movement, that's for sure. It's also important that these films that you made with Ernest in this period were actually choreographed for the camera, so mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they were not pre-existing dances. These were dances that eventually were, versions were made of them for the stage, but these versions were made actually for the camera. So, so they were very camera. specifically made for the camera. They didn't pre-exist the camera, you know, they didn't pre-exist the, the piece, so they were, it's like, just making a film. I wanted to ask about the difference between the formal sort of dancing of Merce and the strong personalities that, that Michael brings, that formalism, but also is a strong personality, to getting to, the, to Lady Bunny at the end. Uh, how does that affect how you shoot them? Um, not really. Um, I mean, I, you know, I know all the dancers, and to me, they're, all the first dancers are strong personalities too, but how he choreographs for them is, is different. Uh, mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I really use the same rules in Hilton and Kirtan as I did in every Cunningham film. I mean, of course, it looks different, but, but really it's just the same basic things. Probably. You know, paying attention to phrases, moving the camera, moving the dance, dance with the camera. I don't know what else. Uh, but you know, the, um, when I'm making the portraits, I mean, the you know, it's that's a whole other thing because I choose the really strong personalities. I think maybe we should um, let you sign books. Okay, let you buy books. Let you sign books. <laughs> And thank you very much for <laughs>